Hello, fiber friends. Welcome to Maddie Makes, a show where I play with wool and yarn and just have a good time. Um, this time, with the war going on in Ukraine, we are going to dye some wool to, you know, symbolize and support Ukraine. So I have this big tub of Cheviot raw wool behind me. I also have all the tools I need to do the dyeing, the big old dye pot. And I don't like the smell of hot vinegar. You can use vinegar though, it's not a problem. Uh, citric acid. For the blue, we're using brilliant blue and I hope it doesn't turn out too dark, but that's the lightest blue I had. And I'm using sun yellow. So that's what we got. We got our safety equipment, we got our gloves and our mask because we don't want to breathe in the powdered dust. It's not good for your lungs. And a spoon for stirring or just, you know, ye old chopstick for stirring. That works good too. So with that being said, let's get set up. Alrighty. So this is a 20 quart pot and it is, it is huge. Um, I'm going to dye quite a lot of wool. This will give it a room to move so it all gets evenly dyed. I did not soak the wool in advance. If you want a more even dye, soak the wool in advance. I want to get a little bit of variance in the colors. Now I'm going to don on my safety equipment, the water ready before the wool is introduced to it. All right, so I'm going to sound a little muffled, so I'm going to try to talk loud enough so you can hear me. Now, since this is quite a bit of water, we're going to put in a good tablespoon of citric acid. And if I see that it's not adhering, I will add more. And we're gonna start with our lightest color first. We're gonna start with the yellow. I want quite a brilliant yellow, but I do not want it turning orange. So that should do it. If you have a smaller pot, use less. Getting the heat turned on. This is why you have throwaway chopsticks. They work really good for breaking these clumps of dye up. Don't use anything that you want to use for food. So we're going to work at getting this a little bit warmer and then I'll be back to you when it is all dissolved. Alrighty, welcome back. The dye is pretty much all diluted. The citric acid is also diluted. So it's completely safe to be maskless right now. Did leave the gloves on because I do not want yellow hands. Okay, we're going to take a good clump of this. Wool and gently push it down. Being dry, it should take the color really easy, not totally evenly. You can hear the air bubbles come out of it. Being a nice big pot, there will be a lot of room to move around. No, I'm just slowly pushing down, so very little agitation. And also another note with dyeing, um, kettle dyeing like this, do not let your kettle boil because that agitation will cause felting. Be mindful of how hot your pot is. Um, when I put this in, it was about 100 degrees. I have the little guy here. So now around 100 and around 100 there you go 101 something like that so i think that'll be a nice yellow <laughs> definitely not sticking around yet so i'm going to do one more row i barely made a dent in this does take a little bit for wool to absorb water. I feel like there's anything in there at all. I hope you can see the air bubbles that are in the wool. So should I push down on it? Cool looking. So it's not boiling really, it's just air trapped in the wool. Just teasing this piece open a little bit. I don't want it too thick or too much resist. 
<laughs> this has been in, I've had this for about a year, so it's about time it got dyed up and used. I have a video from when I first got it and was picking through it. Oh, that would be one of my hairs. That does not need to get dyed. And definitely with the light yellow, you can see the veggie matter that's in here. No worries. We're going to put it through the box picker and that'll get a lot of this out. And then I will put it up on the drum cutter. Like I said, those are, those are future videos. And how we arrange the colors will give us different, uh, different spins on it. So I want to get enough dyed where I can get you different, um, carded bats. And the bats are generally about two ounces. So that gives you enough to spin with, enough to create a project. All right, now I think I got enough in here. The worst comes to worst, I will just do a second batch. Then I can always blend them together. Now I'm setting the uh, spoon down on the old towel because it doesn't matter if it gets more color on it. Then we're gonna let this sit, um, heating up the way it is for another 10 minutes keeping an eye on it that it is hot, but not too hot. 105, 106 right now at the top, but we know the bottom is hotter. So I'm gonna reduce that to like a three on my gas range. So that's low or medium side of low. And we're just gonna let it sit and I will see you in a bit. Welcome back. It's been 15 minutes and as you can see, it's super steamy and awesome in here. I did turn it down a little bit more because like I said, we do not want um, any felting, so any boiling. The wool at the top looks like it has a little bit of ye extra yellow to it, little darker patches, but let's see how it looks overall. Oh, yeah, it's holding its color. Looks good. Okay. Now get off the spoon. And the color in the water, there's still some yellow in the water. So let me flip this over on itself. Then we're gonna let it sit another 15 minutes. Then we're gonna pull it out. Probably pop some more fiber in here if there's any dye left. Because we don't wanna leave any dye behind. Alrighty, all flipped over. And I'll see you in a few. All right, so it's been in the pot over a half an hour. It's hot, it's steamy. I turned it down a bit more. It's evidently not too hot to touch. And you can smell the citric acid and the uh, dye. So let's look at this beautiful thing. The yellow's staying. Yellow looks really good and vibrant. Still a little bit left in the water. I don't think any more is going to go into the fiber. So we're gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna pull this up and drain it out. All right, so I have a strainer and another container over here is going to be a little on the hot side and I do want it to completely cool before I uh, wash it at all. Definitely looks like good coverage. Yeah, there's still quite a bit of color in there. Veggie matter set down to the bottom so I'm just going to get a little chunk of fiber Tease it open. And this is just gonna pick up some really light drips of yellow. So we're gonna let this sit in here until the water clears up. Then I'll pull this out. Okay, now we're at the sink. We're going to wash the yellow. I let it sit out so it's practically dry, but we do need to give it a good wash to get the extra dye out of it. I have the sink set for like a lukewarm water. Um, if your wool is still wet, you want to hit towards about the same temperature 
that the wool is so you don't shock it. If you go from cold to hot, you could easily felt the fibers. I'm gonna wait till this gets, um, I don't know, a third to a half full, and then I'll introduce the soap. I do not want a lot of suds. Um, I'm using um, Dawn, but pretty much any dishwashing detergent will work. Try to stay away from ones that have a lot of harsh colors to them. Um, this is Blue Dawn, but I have yet to have that stain anything. So our yellow should stay yellow. So that's okay. this part is that beautiful yellow. So some of this color will come out as I wash it. Um, and then just to clear the pot of dye, there's this piece, which is a lot lighter. So when I card it up, I'll intermix it all. So you'll get these dark yellows with these subtle lighter spots. Alrighty, we got the pool filled up enough and we are going to add an ample amount of soap to it. Uh, say about a teaspoon. Maybe a little bit more. But, and then you want to run your hands through it. That's why we're going with lukewarm here. And this is just a cubby tray from Ikea, which is perfect size to fit in the sink. Alrighty, so in goes all the wool and we're just being real gentle, pushing down. Really gentle. So the air bubbles pop. The air bubbles coming through the uh, the wall. Might be able to see them a little bit up here in this corner. Yeah. We don't really want to agitate, so just straight pushing down. Um. I'm not really that worried about turning my hand yellow, but when we do the blue, I will be wearing gloves. Um, a little yellow tone to my hands isn't going to be a big deal, but blue's definitely a different story. Alrighty. Now we're going to let this sit for just a couple minutes and then we'll do a couple of rinses. So we let this soak for a bit and I'm just going to pull it back and see yeah, there's a little yellow in the water. I'm going to use this basket strainer. You know, everything I'm using, I use for wool only. You've probably seen the same setup when I washed my wool. And there's that lighter piece. Real gently. You can definitely see the little bit of veggie matter that's left behind. It's all right, we'll... That will clear out in the steps to come. We're going to dump this water out. Now there's no lanolin in it to really speak of, and just a little bit of dye. So it's completely safe for your septic system. Okay, let's rinse this out and start again. Now since this Wool does have some veggie matter in it. I do rinse it out because every time I wash it or move it and get some of the um, grit out of it, I like to just totally wash it away. All right, now we're working this back up to a similar temperature to what the uh, wool is. Alrighty, so this is our first rinse. You push the water out of it as best you can and then Gently, no automatic faucet, uh, put it all back in. Gently push, let the water run through. Oh, see, just barely any yellow left behind now. Let's get this out of here. It doesn't need to sit long for a rinse, especially since it wasn't, I didn't overly soap it. Try to clear all the wool out of the water. I'm just going to move this up to the other sink. Barely any yellow. Quick rinse out to get rid of all the veggie matter. I 
another bath trying to keep it the same temperature and that's just a hand fill um if you're not that great at judging temperature with your hands get one of those uh heat temp guns all right let's let this fill up and i'll be back it's the last rinse let's see if there's any yellow left behind now since it's so sodden it sinks right in really well move it around a little bit because any place that's really brightly colored is where um, there's probably a little extra dye that's going to come out. All right, now the rake. Oh, and that is pretty clear. I'm going to rake it the other way. You see how clear that is? There's veggie matter in there, but... Water's pretty clear. So I think I am done rinsing it before I play with it too much and felt it because that's definitely what we don't want to do. Push all the water out you can. Now at this point you can put it in a spin dryer or um, a salad spinner, whatever you have. Since my salad spinner's all the way downstairs, I don't want to go get it. I am just going to wrap it up in this towel. So push all the water out that I could at this point. That is a lot of fiber that we dyed. Checking to see if we have any fiber left behind, and we do not. And just to get some of the extra moisture in it, I'm just going to roll it up like a burrito or you know if you're making like a rolled cake thing that would be good too and give a little squeeze to it and most of that moisture is just gonna come on out all right now you're ready just to leave it on a rack and let it dry